Tinnitus ear ringing has more questions than it does answers at this time. In a recent community post, I asked you, the viewers, to give me some of your questions around tinnitus. Dr. Ben Thompson is here to answer two of those questions. Thanks so much, guys. Excited to be here and see if I can provide some value and help you find relief for your tinnitus. I completed an audiology residency in San Francisco, California at the University of California Hospital. And after that, I started a YouTube channel where I've made over 500 educational videos on tinnitus. And we also have a nationwide telehealth service for those who have tinnitus. Wonderful. So our first question here is from Yellow Flowers. Is there a relationship between high stress levels and tinnitus? I ask because I've noticed somewhat of a correlation in my own life. The relationship between stress and tinnitus is well documented and is using part of the brain network called the limbic system. So inside of the tinnitus brain network, we've learned over time that tinnitus also pronounced tinnitus. The medical professionals typically say tinnitus, but you can say tinnitus. It's all okay. I'm going to say tinnitus. The brain relationship between the ear and the brain is well understood now for tinnitus. And you might think that tinnitus is only coming from the ear, that you have something wrong with your ear, and therefore tinnitus is related to your ear. And the actual source of tinnitus is usually in the auditory brain. So there's this lack of input going through the system, typically related to the ear, but that source of tinnitus is in the auditory brain. And stress is related to tinnitus because the auditory brain, which through evolution was used to help us stay alert to our environment. And it was connected to this deep emotional part of the brain, which sorts stimulus like sounds, either as threatening, neutral, bothersome, or nothing at all. And the sound of tinnitus, when it becomes bothersome and that prolonged effect of uh, obtrusive and difficult tinnitus, that's been triggered through this system that we refer to as the limbic network that attaches to our fight or flight response, that mechanism where if a sound in our environment triggers us, then our brain can potentially mark it as a threat. So if the sound of tinnitus, if a ringing, buzzing, hissing sound in your ears or in your brain is categorized as a threat by the brain, then it will be louder, more pronounced, and harder to ignore. Stress activates this emotional center of the brain called the limbic system. So if my body is tight, if my anxiety centers or stress centers are wound up, then this system between the ear and the brain and tinnitus and the emotional centers can go out of balance and start to wind itself up. So if I'm stressed at work and I come home after work, I'll notice my tinnitus is louder. And similarly, if I had a very challenging emotional uh, experience with my family or my friends, or um, I had financial stress or retirement stress, then I can sometimes hear that tinnitus is louder. Uh, and that is all due to this brain stress relationship, Dale. So it's not just a byproduct of, I exposed myself to a loud sound, and now I have that. It's all these stressors in our lives. And it sounds like a huge part of the solution is treating it like it's no big deal, figuring out a way to let go of that. To find the right treatment for tinnitus, we have to diagnose the correct cause. So we're always providing treatments or therapies based on a correct and accurate diagnosis of the cause. For many people, stress isn't the cause, but it's a reason why it's it gets louder or it exacerbates the sound and the symptom. So for most people, keeping stress in check, settling the mind, settling the body, following protocols that have been designed for stress reduction for tinnitus, that's what I teach, that's what I've seen the most success with, that can really help keep the symptoms in check. And for another group of people, uh, stress-induced tinnitus can be a cause. So the nervous system between the, the brain between the nerves and the physical body, it can be triggered after a series of stressful events in your life. So we often ask the question, was there significant stress in the three to six months leading up to tinnitus? Because if so, then stress could be a cause of tinnitus as well. 
I see. And that may be why quite a few people have been experiencing it since 2020. And if I understand it right, it also could be a symptom. Tinnitus is a symptom of other things that might be going on, such as high blood pressure, different things like that. Tinnitus can be a a cause of most notably hearing loss, uh, age-related hearing loss, also other ear conditions like ear infections, but it could be a symptom of cardiovascular health conditions uh, as well as neurological conditions. So anything related to the, to the blood system, to the cardiovascular system, um, medication changes can lead to tinnitus and other kinds of physical issues like TMJ, jaw tightness, or upper neck conditions as well. Many different causes, Dale, but I want everyone who's watching to know that there is hope for tinnitus and there are ways to manage it and to bring this tinnitus to a better place. All right, let's go to the next question here. This one from Carrie S. What's the latest or best hope in the ongoing science towards treatment of tinnitus? Very good question. So the current best practices, the current leading treatment for tinnitus will include a combination of targeted sound therapy, as well as one-on-one expert coaching or counseling. And those modalities are sometimes referred to as tinnitus retraining therapy and has elements of cognitive behavioral therapy. So right now, if you are to go to the best tinnitus doctor on the internet or to go to the best tinnitus clinic in your local city, then you may be recommended one of those methods. And those are absolutely best practices. You can have confidence in following those protocols. There's more new research that's still experimental, but it's looking at uh, bimodal stimulation as a treatment for tinnitus. And as of the time making this video in 2023, that is uh, the newest treatment that has our excitement and we're monitoring it closely. So what that means is that uh, there are different ways to stimulate two senses at the same time, the ear as well as uh, the tongue or the ear as well as the cheek or the neck. So some of these treatments and devices are still in the research phase. Others uh, like Lanier from Neuromod are in the FDA approval process and are slowly being released and um, experimented with here in the United States. And then, of course, if you go to a well-respected audiologist who specializes in tinnitus, you'll have access to all of these options um, because any good tinnitus specialty doctor will be independent and want to recommend you the best treatment that's available. Fantastic. I think we can't understate the importance of finding a specialist to look at your own case and kind of drill down on the things that may be causing it because they're so unique to each person, depending on what you've done for a living how much stress is in your life and many other factors like that. So thanks, Dr. Ben. And I understand you have a little bonus tidbit that you'd like to share with us. Yeah, absolutely. I'll put some images on the screen here. I wanted to walk us through an example of why I have so much hope for those with tinnitus. You may have heard from other doctors that there's nothing you can do for tinnitus. You'll just have to learn to live with it. There's no cure. Just try to forget about it. And this is not true. There's lots of tangible things that can help with your tinnitus. And that's what we need to focus on. That's actually what gives our patients the best results. So I'm going to introduce Randy's story. And Randy had a full interview on my YouTube channel where it was a podcast interview where he explained how he went from very loud, constant tinnitus in both ears down to periods of having moments of quiet, not noticing it at all just uh, in less than six months. So Randy was an airline pilot who had mild tinnitus for 15 years. In March of 2022, his tinnitus spiked to a constant eight out of 10 volume in both ears. Um, He experienced severe insomnia because of the noise he was hearing and he was prescribed um, sleep medication and anxiety medication to help him deal with the, the intense change to what he was hearing. He had never tried any tinnitus treatment before because before this, he didn't need it. He came to our team at Treble Health and he had a 87 out of 100 score for tinnitus. So that means his tinnitus was a very big problem and we score it from zero to 100 on a questionnaire scale. So he used strategies to help him during the day as well as during the night with our team at Treble Health. His loud, constant tinnitus in just a few months went down to a small problem of only 20 out of 100. And then a few months later became a three out of 100, not a problem. And he was quoted saying that he's having moments of quiet, not noticing the tinnitus at all. 
So in about five months, he went from this 87 out of 100 constant tinnitus in both ears. And doctors told him there wasn't much he could do. He used sound therapy. He used targeted sound therapy treatment from an audiologist on our team via telehealth. And then after a period of about five months of consistent appointments for the one-on-one -on -one coaching, plus the sound therapy with daytime strategies and nighttime strategies to help sleep, he was able to bring his tinnitus down significantly. So the reason we want to share this is because uh, you may not know someone like Randy who's succeeded with tinnitus treatment, but we as tinnitus specialists, as audiologists, have dozens and dozens of examples of patients like this. So you can absolutely get better. And between Dale, your videos and expert audiologist information and education like we're providing here, uh, I really want everyone to know that it's possible. Fantastic. We'll put a link to Randy's story down in the description as well as to Dr. Ben's channel, Treble Health, so you guys can hear some more stories from the audiologist side of things. I think that's amazing because whenever I fly, I put in earplugs and then I usually put headphones over that because it's so loud, especially a lot of times we're getting to the plane late. So we're back by the, the engines, which is probably louder than the cockpit. But planes are such a loud environment. If you were to look at OSHA standards, it's way above the exposure level that we should have. So the fact that Randy is able to calm his tinnitus is, is an amazingly hopeful story. Absolutely. Uh, that's the message that needs to be shared. Thanks, Dr. Ben, for being on the channel. We hope to have you again here sometime soon. Your channel is really doing a lot. So it's, it's very exciting to see this and, and learn more about the subject.